I covered an article very similar to this not too long ago about many of the larger larger firms moving out of New York. New York for the longest has basically been uh, the hub for the country. It's where you know you have some of the biggest airliners, you have some of the biggest businesses, you have Wall Street, you have a lot of these different firms. And for the longest, New York has basically been the hub of business. Now, unfortunately, as a result of the business closures, the very strict lockdowns, politicians imagine that this isn't going to have some sort of a reckoning when it comes to businesses. And of course, for most of these individuals who just basically want to go about their business, be able to buy and sell and do business with other companies, with other countries, unfortunately, as a result of what's going on, we've seen a huge move primarily as a, as a loss of freedom here in New York. I live here in Manhattan. I've lived here uh, almost nine years already. And of course, what we're seeing are more and more companies leave the Big Apple for other places, for example, like Florida and Texas. And with those business closures, and of course, with many of these businesses moving, also go jobs. And so, of course, we've seen huge impacts. Of course, these primarily impact minorities. I spoke about this extensively that where New York, New York City alone has lost over 500,000 jobs. The population in New York City is only about 8 million. Now, now, obviously not all of those individuals work because that takes into consideration elderly, retirees, children, etc. And for a small city to lose that many jobs, and this wasn't just at the height of the pandemic, this is even still currently with that many loss of jobs, it will have a huge reckoning on the city moving forward. Many people unfortunately think, you know, that this is just a small blip in New York and don't worry, you know, New York will recover, etc. And in my opinion, from what I read in the financial market, from people who put out information, like news articles, we are actually only at the beginning stages of the collapse of New York. New York will probably go the way of places like Detroit as more and more money moves out of the state and you know this money doesn't come back. You know, once these companies opt to leave for places where they experience more freedom and lower taxes, it's like why would you come back? Like I said in another video, you know, when they you know when people leave these areas, just like during times during war periods where they would go and they would scorch the lands back when people primarily you know lived off of like farms. And then what they would do is they would scorch the earth so that the people after the war was over or during periods of regression, people would go back, but there was nothing to go back to. And so it's the same thing ideologically when, uh, when instead of, you know, at, 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 you know, actually physically scorching the land, they scorched the land in essence ideologically. And so people realized there is nothing for me to go back to. People who leave places like California and New York will never come back. And so here is an article from the Daily Mail talking about 20 top finance and tech firms in New York City are on the verge of leaving for Florida with more to follow if the Empire State imposes a $7 billion tax. And so that's really what we're seeing. I believe there is now in question of a uh, of a interaction tax or a transaction tax, excuse me, for the exchanges. And so what that would do is it basically just trying to tax many of these entities and of course money will just leave you know people imagine these politicians imagine that these big business and tech places that they're just going to sit there and we're going to tax the hell out of them and they're not going to just up and leave and of course they are very much wrong his business leaders in new york city express outrage at proposed seven billion dollar tax it says it says legislators considering new and increased taxes on businesses and the rich some firms have already left and that was one of them for you know you have places like goldman sachs that are moving to florida or at the very least they're moving some of their jobs up there where they're creating like little hubs and they're basically moving many of their high paying jobs over there it goes on to say, it says, uh, some firms have already left and others uh, warn that they will follow. They will follow it if taxes rise. This Goldman Sachs and JetBlue are both considering moving to Florida. This is low tax. Florida has attracted droves of wealthy New Yorkers during the pandemic. And it goes on to say, it says, dozens of top companies in New York City are on the verge of departing for Florida. And the exodus may increase if the state passes a $7 billion tax hike 
business leaders say. And of course, this is a little more related to what I spoke about last time, where you have individuals, for example, like Andrew Yang, who are trying to run for mayor and they want to create this sort of uh, ubi which is just basically another f another welfare which they want you know many of these individuals who are working and drawing and drawing in money and salary and of course they want them to fund this because the only way that you just can't keep creating money out of thin air it just basically devalues the money and so what they want to do is, of course if they want to basically tax the rich or anyone who is you know perceived as rich it says at least 20 finance and tech companies are already poised to leave the Big Apple for the Sunshine State. It says um, Kathleen Wheel, the CEO of Business Pact Partnership for New York City, told the New York Post. Among those considering to move to Florida are companies like JetBlue. And I think there was recently um, Chuck Schumer had talked about this exact same thing, basically pleading with these people, please don't leave. There's numerous politicians that are begging a lot of these institutions, please don't go. Let us tax you to death, but please don't go because they realize that who are they going to get their money from? It'll just be from next to next in line as wealth and people who are considered rich is just relative. If you make $100,000 a year, you're considered rich by comparison to somebody who's homeless. If you make 100000 a year, but the guy's making a million, you're looking at that individual as someone who is considered rich. And so a lot of that, of course, is relative to whoever's left. So if all these wealthy people leave, right, if we have all these big companies and institutions that leave, and all the million dollar people that you know are left then the only thing that that's left are basically the new rich which are the hundred thousandaires and so you're the ones who will be taxed and of course eventually those individuals will seek to leave as well making new york potentially the next city to collapse there's among those considering to move forward are of course institutions like JetBlue. JetBlue has been in new york for the longest their, their hub is here and as American Airlines, they created a deal because American Airlines wasn't doing so well in New York and places like New York. And so they basically gave JetBlue a lot of their market share for hopes for international, for international, for a share of JetBlue's international travel. And it says here, it says, which has been headquartered in Queens since its founding two decades ago in Goldman Sachs, which maintains its head office at an upscale address in lower Manhattan. And again, if you're for a lot of these institutions, I think it was only like 18 percent of employees actually went back to, the, to office spaces. Excuse me. And that's where a lot of Manhattan's uh, revenue in terms of taxes comes from. A lot of the revenue comes from a lot of these office spaces from real estate. And so if you have a lot of these companies because of the fear mongering over the virus, many of these people just don't want to go back to work. And so they're just basically having them work from home. And a lot of these businesses realize all these people that we had office space for, we actually don't need the office space. And so what you're seeing here in New York is a collapse of the real estate, which will continue to happen as more and more of these companies opt to leave. Because if they're not enough jobs, right, that then basically what happens is productivity starts to slow down, especially because of giving out, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who are receiving unemployment and they've gotten stimulus checks. And so companies now have to compete with the government who's giving out basically free money to these individuals. And so you have you know less people who are working and produce and being productive. You have more people who are staying at home, but they're basically consuming. They're still the consumption has not decreased as a result and so you have fewer people making products while also having the same amount of people who are looking for you know you have the same demand and so the only thing that that is going to do for people especially those who live in large cities is you're going to see prices rise in things like obviously food 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 prices are of course set to rise it's one of the sectors where i am primarily heavily invested as well as oil um, i do have investments in exxon mobil as well as as i was invested in JetBlue. You know, wrote it all the way up. And of course, I'm bidding on more like travel, food stocks, and oil. It goes on to say, as after surviving a year of pandemic fears, this is harsh restrictions on social activities and soaring crime. And I've talked extensively about how we're seeing more and more crime. And this is obviously as there are less opportunities, there's less resources for jobs. It primarily impacts blacks and Hispanics, blacks by, more, by, by far, especially here where we've seen crime spike. I mean, you follow, I follow, for example, um, CBS New York. And it's just like, throughout the day, it's just one crime after another. You know, you see one shooting and primarily in black neighborhoods, you know, up here in, in Harlem and in places like, for example, in, you know, Bronx and Brooklyn. 
where you're primarily going to see blacks and uh, blacks and hispanics and we've seen crime crime has skyrocketed i mean there's one article after another of a shooting a mugging a stabbing you know someone gets robbed in broad daylight things of that nature you're, we're seeing um businesses here in the downtown area where they're just basically like flash robbing there's like you know five or eight people walking into you know a very upscale uh business and they just basically steal everything and then they they, they run out because people are trying to uh, you know, as there's less police, there's less resources. This is the natural inclination when cities start to collapse because they can't, you know, the people who are in, in positions of responsibility have absolutely no idea what they're doing. And unfortunately, you have individuals like AOC and people like Andrew Yang, who are basically, you know, that the tax the rich, the sort of individuals, you know, let's let's shower them with free stuff. And unfortunately, that only works for so long. You know, you can only give people other people's money for so long until those people just decide to leave and then there's no money left and then you just have a collapse this so goes on to say says business leaders say the massive proposed tax hike could be the final straw for many companies and the primary reason is they have to have a way to support many of these people who have been on welfare or on, or on some form of welfare for so long like for example social security and unemployment insurance just and this is why i, I talked about it in my last article where that they you're going to hear more about UBI, universal basic income, or you know minimum standard of living, or something to that nature, which is just basically you know the government just showering people with helicopter money, and that's what you see more in of you know a socialistic sort of societies, and eventually it just leads to communism, and that's basically what we're seeing here in places like New York, and that's why people and businesses are fleeing, and why the rich flee because they don't want to sit here and be milked. For all of their money as they're basically working to support all of these other people the only thing that happens is you see an eventual crash this is the uh, legislator's proposal will move us in the opposite direction by driving away the businesses and tax base required to do that it says real estate board of new york president um james whelan told the post this is we have been down this road before and people don't learn from history in the 1960s and 70s, such policies ultimately discouraged investment in New York City and led to a diminished tax base and fewer resources for the delivery of the government services. The results were devastating. Two decades of fiscal problems along with rising crime and unacceptable quality of life. Sunny Florida, which has no state income tax, has emerged as an attractive alternative and many top hedge funds hedge funders have already fled for the southern state and we're seeing this basically across the board from places like of course new york and california this billionaire car icon recently decided to re relocate his asset management firm from manhattan to florida and it's funny because isn't he like one of those free thinking you know leftists but of course even the wealthy leftists always going to where there is more freedom they advocate for you to be uh, more free with your resources but they themselves of course when it comes down to it will flee it says in ken griffin's uh, of citadel group and of course citadel has been in the news reportedly for what's going on with gamestop the reporter plans to open an office in miami next year because paul singer is also moving the headquarters of his 41 billion dollar hedge fund elliott manager from midtown manhattan to west palm beach and of course <clears throat> along with this goes many of these jobs you know you have a lot of these high paying salaries for either brokers traders etc and they end up leaving and then so most of these individuals live down here in the financial district or about in the manhattan area they pay exorbitant prices for you know their rents but why would you want to do that when you have no freedom everything in manhattan is closed a lot of the bars and restaurants have been closed especially around me we've seen i've seen many of the traditional bars and restaurants that have been around here for numerous years and unfortunately many of them have collapsed and as a result you have Fewer places to go, Broadway is closed, movie theaters for the most part. I think it's like 25% capacity, which is ridiculous. Many of these places, of course, are kind of skirting the law. Um, I've seen plenty of bars around here that are full capacity, uh, but good for them. Let them, you know, the government is basically causing cause, causing all of these problems. This is Blackstone, um, an NYC-based private equity alternative investment management firm with assets of $34 billion also announced it is going to open an office in Miami. It says both houses of New York's legislator have proposed budgets that include nearly a seven billion dollars in new and increased taxes on businesses and the rich. New York State will be the most 
tax state in the country if the proposed passed uh, if the pro if the proposal passes says um willed uh, lamented to the post technology jobs many of which have been done as remote work for the past year now are particularly vulnerable to relocation out of the expensive cities technology is our most important job creator in new york in new york right now and they're already making decisions about not staying in new york this de uh, says declining to specify which companies are planning to move earlier this week a leaked jet blue memo revealed that the company is considering whether to stay in new york where it has found where it was founded two decades ago uh, or move its headquarters to florida a spokesman a spokesperson for the airline confirmed to the dailymail.com that it is looking into its real estate options the airline said in a statement that its current lease expires on the 20 on uh, july of 2023 and it is reviewing its options and considering how our space requirements may evolve in a hybrid work environment post pandemic as the spokeswoman said that a decision is expected later this year she said more than 1300 employees uh, employees work at the headquarters in long island city across the river from Manhattan. the blue said that it is exploring a number of options including staying at its current headquarters moving elsewhere in new york city or shifting some new york jobs based um, to existing JetBlue facilities in florida the airline has a training center in orlando and a traveling and a travel product subsidiary in fort lauderdale the airline said that it no uh, excuse me the airline said that no matter what it is what it decides about the headquarters it still plans to expand at all three new york city major airports and of course this is just going to be going forward you have jp morgan also said that they were to be um, that they, he also said was to open moving to 473 billion of the company's headquarters down to miami and so all this spells is huge losses for the inhabitants of new york it will work you know you'll see the housing market collapse which is why you've seen rents um move down there's a lot of apartments here that have been you know like 50 percent discounted and it's, it's only going to get worse the primary problem with a lot of these um office spaces because they've, they've injected so much fear into the market is that now they don't know what to do in all these office spaces as they people don't want to go back to work they don't want to go back into the office spaces businesses realize you know what we're able to maintain just fine working with having a lot of these people you know work from home so why do we need all this office space and so what happens is they're trying to convert a lot of these uh, apartments or i should say they're trying to convert a lot of these offices into apartments but who's going to live there if they don't have a job right and that's just basically the story of the collapse of new york like i said in quite a few other videos but this is just the beginning of the end of new york city being you know the financial hub that it's been for so long